Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the movie trivia showdown. It is the last match in round number three before we cement the semifinals. Both sides of the bracket starting to head to the semifinals. I am Christian Harloff, joined as always by Mark Ellis. We just saw Jeff Snyder defeat Mark Riley via TKO here, Mark, and now he will go on to face the winner of this match today. You have Tom, the Enigma. We don't know anything uh, about him except he knows he knows movies somehow. He knows where to bury things and he knows movies. And then you have Ethan Irwin, former movie trivia showdown champion of the world, who is going on a tear so far. He looks really good. He had a very nice first round and the second round uh, just scraping by Eric Zipper. Yeah, Christian, I don't know how to approach this match because Ethan Irwin, we know that he's a legend of the game already. We know how many movies he's seen and how much he actually knows about those movies. But with Tom, like, look, I know Ethan has seen pretty much every movie ever made. Tom, I don't know if he actually watches movies or if he tries to eat a VHS tape. The guy is an enigma, like you said, but for whatever reason, he knows how to answer questions that we ask. I don't know if he knows you by name, if he knows that I'm not an actual carrot, but he knows how to answer within 15 seconds, and that's all that this game requires. He might be one of the best we have at doing that. Well, he's done very well so far. He beat uh, Tim Franco in his first match. He defeated Jada Paramo in his second match. And here he is now facing Ethan Irwin. Now, remember, Tom has a victory over Ethan Irwin as they competed in teams last year. So this is something that Ethan mentioned in his post interview last time that he wants to avenge it. Now, here's the interesting part of all of this, as you all have seen in the last couple of uh, days here, a video popped up. And it was of one Andrew Guy. We haven't seen Andrew Guy really much at all since his match against Ben Bateman. So obviously when he popped up on screen, we're like, okay, what's he going to be talking about now? And it seems as if something happened where Andrew Guy seems to be back to, I hate to use the word, but normal, Mark? Don't put that sort of jinx on it because he was covered. He was sweatier than I was at the Viper Room when he was competing in, you call it a match. I'm not sure how to actually classify what happened with him versus Bateman, but he took a beating. But yeah, he does. I mean, you root for the guy. You know, you want him just as a friend. You want him to get back on his feet and be independent and not have to check in on him. But could him and whatever he brings to the table today impact this match? I It remains to be seen. Well, it's interesting because of the fact that it's also been announced that both Andrew Guy and Ethan Irwin are going to be a team and that they are. This is the first time that we're going to see them in a dynamic. How do they work together? How are they able to communicate? This is kind of the first test because Andrew Guy will be acting as the uh, the usual suspects manager today. And how will that communication go? We know the communication between Kate and Tom is very, very good because somehow what we thought nobody else could do except video drew kate has somehow been able to speak to tom in some type of language and get him to win he's 2 and 0 under her tutelage yeah there's some sort of motherly instinct going on there with fittingly the den and with kate and grace being the den mothers of tom i think tom's taken to it i think if anything christian it may be a step in the right direction i mean we talked about how we're rooting for our friend andrew guy i don't know tom that well but he does seem to have some semblance of independence from what he was dealing with last year where he was clearly within the clutches of video drew so maybe tom spreading his wings a little bit maybe that helps him compete against a titan like Ethan Irwin. Neither one of these guys has an easy match. The tough thing about today is you and I ruling all this carnage. Well, we're going to find out exactly how we got to round number three between big time Ethan Irwin and the Enigma, Tom. I'm going to be very honest with all of you. There are not too many players in this league that scare me. One that does is Tom. Steve McQueen. Wow. Two more points. A, he has That's not a missed the question. Two. We haven't seen this, this since. An e this is very Ethan Irwin like. Do we know? Is he the crocodile guy? Oh, God. Ethan Irwin, the man is an 
animal. Uh, obviously, Ethan uh, pretty handily won his first two matches, and now he's up against Tom, who, I don't know, does he think he's, is it some sort of Phantom of the Opera thing? Ethan, I've been waiting in your house for an hour now. When are you coming home? The guy, the guy freaks me out. Ethan Irwin, if you want to be close that so badly, I'll tell you what, I promise you, I'm going to close the door on you today. I'll be very, very honest. I just, I don't know how it's going to go. But either way, one of us is going to the final four. Check it out. The man is a runaway train. There is really no stopping him at this point. Wait, maybe this is in your house. I'm in someone's house. Oh, there you go. It's it's uh, it's exactly what you thought it would be. Strange, but Ethan though, Ethan's on a very different mission normally than he has been in, in seasons past. Um, this is the scariest version of Ethan Irwin. If I'm a competitor, that I think that I'm looking at because Ethan beforehand was always like, yeah, I'm gonna play, I'm gonna play, and he still kind of carries that attitude. But he seems the most locked in to the game itself and trying to maneuver the game and play. I think that that, that little run with with Roca to Merle, it, it changed him, I, I think. Uh, I, I It just seems like he's playing very different than he has in the past. Yeah, I'm following your logic here, and it sounds like for a long time the competitive juices that flowed within Ethan were under the surface. They were an iceberg waiting to be discovered, if you will, but now you get that iceberg and it's above water. Is that going to sink the Titanic that is Tom? We're about to find out. But before we get to the competitors, Christian, there's going to be some fun that he had with these managers today. Uh, there is. And before we even bring in the managers of the, of the den, I, I've got to talk to this gentleman here. I got to hey, bring Hey, hello, Christian. Mark, how you doing? Andrew Guy. Uh, dude, we haven't really seen you much in the in the Schmodown since, uh, you know, a couple months ago with your match. So what's changed? We, we see this video the other day. You come out, you seem like you're, you're old kind of, even more so, peppy self and talking about how you're managing Ethan and excited to be playing in the team's division. What changed? Uh, you know, uh, sometimes there's just been things that have uh, been hidden below the surface, if you will. And uh, for the longest time, they've been holding me down, keeping me back, keeping me down. Um, and uh, one of those was that Ethan Irwin and I were going to be a team. And you heard about his fiery competitive nature. Now, ever since Drew McQueen, decided to retire uh, for whatever reasons those may be, uh, Sam and I had a plan, just like we had a plan today for me to come in and manage, but we also had a plan about who my partner was going to be. So you talk about this new competitive fire behind Ethan and, well, I'm not going to say you're looking at it, but Christian, Mark, you are looking at it. Hey. hey uh, Andrew, I, I hesitate to, to bring up the events of, of just a few weeks ago. What do you remember about the match you played against your former buddy, Ben Bateman? Uh, I remember... Uh, you know, a very well played game by Ben. I remember some oddly worded questions asked by yours truly. Uh, no, yours truly. Yours truly. Uh, and I, um, I remember it was pretty hot that day. It was a scorch. It was a scorch. I'll, I'll give him that, Christian. It's been a heat wave in LA recently, so that maybe accounts for yeah. some of the armpit, if not under the chest and belly button sweat. Well, good. Well, I'll say. Contact, contact sweat. I just wanted to clarify, it is contact sweat. Well, fair, Andrew. Look, it's uh, it's good to see you back here, uh, in and to see you kind of have your uh, your wits about you. So, uh, I'm glad to have you back. And I will say that today you are in the manager role, not the competitor role, and you will be joined by these two ladies, both Grace Hancock and we have Tom's mom, if you will, and that is Kate Mulligan. All right, so <laughs> ladies. Grace, uh, you, I know that you enjoy uh, terrorizing everyone, but but mostly Sam Levine and myself. But Sam is not here today, and you have, you're have you staring at Andrew Guy, who is now going to be mentioned, uh, managing Ethan Irwin. Any uh, words for, for Andrew? You know, not really. I, I'm just I'm really thrilled that him and his dad, Polo, were able to get out of the loony bin today to join us. And uh, I'm really excited to see how Tom buries all of these fellows as well. So... Uh, we have Kate, the mommy, and we've got myself, the daddy. So I'm ready for this. 
uh, uh, not yeah. too dissimilar from Christian and I's relationship, but it, it, Kate, I, I, I want to clear something uh -huh. up. I, I want to make sure I'm, yeah, I'm can saying... I actually, can I actually jump in real quick and clarify? Sure, go ahead. Andy. Oh, I would just like to say it's a poly cotton blend, Grace, and, and honestly, with the weather these days, it just helps me move and, and feel more comfortable. Yeah, like I said, dad polo. Okay. All right. Okay. Kate? Um, let's uh, focus on this match here in particular, uh -huh. Kate. Your, your competitor's okay. name is is Tom. Am I pronouncing that right, Tom? I uh, Tom. Yeah, Tom. Tom. Uh, yeah. So Tom. Tom. He Tom. Is. Yeah. It, you say, seem say, to have. You have to repeat after repeat after me, Tom. 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 Your competitor. Um, seems to look at you as a motherly figure. Is that yeah. a running joke because the Schmodown was started by comedians? Or is it actually like, does Tom need to have you as his mom in order to show up today? Listen, Tom needs me to think that he needs to think that I'm his mom so that he doesn't murder me at the end of the season, okay? It's not really Tom needs it, it's I need it, okay? I don't, I don't know what that guy's capable of. You can tell me it's Smokey here from, from a gender reveal party. I think it's something that Tom did, honest to God. So all I do is I keep this guy happy, okay? Tom. Tom. Right. Tom, Tom it is. All right, well, Tom. I will. I will. Last question I have for all of you. First, to start with you, Andrew. So, usual suspects, you're taking over here to manage. How did you convince Sam that you were able to uh, to take the reins here, and, and you were? Uh, I don't well, know. I, I think I know what you're alluding to, and and I don't honestly know if it was difficult, Christian. I think Sam and I had a pretty healthy conversation uh, before the match, and uh, I don't, you know, other than speaking before the match and maybe a little bit afterwards. Uh, I think, I think. What I did gave him a lot of confidence in me, and that's why I'm here today. And and, and honestly, I think the biggest thing is about Ethan. I, Ethan could have anyone managing him, but I'm managing him. I'm his partner. The reason is to build a relationship today. It's to build trust with one another, and Ethan could do this on his own. Ethan doesn't need a manager. He's done it before. He's done this many, many times with no one helping him. Sam and I just want to make sure that we're here today to provide the best assistance that the champion needs. All right. And uh, uh, a question, Andrew Guy, was it in your writer that you needed to have multiple surfaces to reflect your ring light before you accepted this jab today? Well, actually, Kate, if you notice, uh, uh -huh. there's, well, <laughs> I can't actually speak on that. Okay. Mm -hmm. hey. Okay. All yeah. right. Well, all right. So listen, uh, this is very, very interesting from all of you. I can, uh, good luck. And we'll see you in, uh, in, in just a bit. I'm not going to say right. that I'm concerned about this because I would take this Andrew guy over the one we saw a few short weeks ago. So I'm going to say we're heading in the right direction. And I'm going to cross my fingers for that. I, yeah, I'm just, I, I'm, 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 conf all right. Ready to go? All right. Um, I have a feeling another massive shoe is going to drop at some point during this match. So I'm preparing for it. All right. E either way, either way. Uh, here is the uh, the s competitors are ready to get going after the managers are set behind and we here are we ready to run. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia schmodown. Introducing first, representing the den with a record of two wins, no defeats, he is the Enigma, this is Tom! Teeth. Uh, Tom, it's a match. What? Tom. I'm in Ethan's house. Um, that's possible. Uh, it's definitely possible. Uh, Tom, um... Tom, how, how you feeling? I, I'm not sure this is the right Ethan. Uh, I'll probably Christian, I think I got this. Um, no. Hey, Tom, it's a little balmy right now in Southern California, where I believe you're currently located. You want to you want to maybe take the hoodie off for this match and, and and breathe a little bit, not sweat as much. I've never been to California. Well, I tried. All right, Tom, we're gonna put you in the. Waiting room. Well, where's you, where's where's mom? She she'll be here soon. She'll be here soon. Get yourself a glass of milk. Yeah, right. that relationship is uh, much deeper than just a competitor manager, Christian. I don't know what's happening. And his opponent, 
representing the usual suspects with a record of 12 wins, five defeats, and five knockouts. He is the 2018 Movie Trivia Schmodown Player of the Year and the former Movie Trivia Schmodown Champion of the World, Big Time, Ethan Irwin. Ethan, Big Time Irwin. I like that shirt a lot, actually. Yeah, uh, a fan a fan made this shirt. I actually, a big shout out to them. And also, whoever you might be, I would love to know your name because um, I love it. It's a great shirt. It's really good. So, Ethan, uh, lots, lots going on here. Obviously, you had that amazing match with Zipper. You hit the five. You, uh, it, you just avoid sudden death there, and it was a great match. But you're playing really good here. Before this match began, I said that it seems to me since that match with Roca and Merle, not that you didn't take the game serious before. I know that you did, but it seems that you're the most locked into the game that you ever have been. Is that is that accurate? Uh, yeah, definitely, yeah. I'm definitely emboldened. I definitely, you know, just the, the juices are really flowing now in a way that they weren't before. Uh, Ethan, I'd love to ask you about the match, but I'm more concerned about you, your actual home security at this point. There, There is a chance Tom is somewhere in your house now. No, he's I don't like even... right there. He's right there. Okay. And it's fine. Um, We're faced away. We're not going to cheat off each other. I told you to do that Joe Don Baker trick from Cape Fear, the remake, where he ties yeah. the strings to the teddy bear, and clearly my text fell on deaf ears. I, I guess I thought it was more of a euphemism for something else. It's fair. Um, well, speaking of, uh, look, it's from one side to the next. You know, uh, there was a lot of talk after when these teams were about to be announced. It was going back and forth. Was it going to be Janine? Would it be Atchity or would it be Andrew Guy? It was announced that it was Andrew Guy. And not only is he going to be your partner, he's your manager here today. I know that you also had seen uh, his his behavior over the last couple of months. Was that concerning going into this match? Was that concerning going in as a team? And how how you've been working with that as your manager for this match? Uh, I mean, look, you know, Janine and I, I felt we're a great team. Uh, in our, in fact, I feel like I let her down when we played Tom Video Drew low those many years ago, and uh, and so yeah, I, I I think she's great. Obviously, she did great at the live event, um, and so when the, when we talked about who should I be with next, you know, I've always appreciated Andrew Guy. In fact, he tried to like recruit me early on years ago, and uh, obviously seeing what he did, you know, and his kind of behavior, yeah, it scared me a little bit. But having spoken with him, I feel like it was just a phase, you know. We all go mad a little mad sometimes. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm excited. And this, I think today is a real proving ground for our future partnership. I, and I'm excited to do it. All right, well, we're going to find out just a second here because Ethan Irwin, good luck to you. Thank you. We remove Ethan, we bring back Tom, and there again is big time Ethan Irwin. All right, so remember, both Ethan and Tom, first round, Make sure that after you write your answers to keep your hands up. Mark, what are the rules of round number one? Oh, thank God, the rules. The rules of round number one are as thus. The field of competition. Tom, honey, we're not eating our paper now. We're not eating our paper. We're actually using that to write down the answers to movie trivia questions. You're going to hear eight in round number one. Each one's worth a point. No penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing in round number one. As soon as we ask the question, uh, honey, you, you don't put that in your mouth either. You, remember, we you spit that out. Very good. And you can also use a JTE rule if you want. You have three of them to use, as a matter of fact, throughout the three-round match. And, oh, no, that looks like a swallow. I'm going to need you to, Tom, spit that out for Mama. There you go. There you go. And you also have one challenge to use at any point throughout the three-round contest. If you need a challenge, just ask for your manager or say, Mommy, no, that's a valuable collectible, Tom. We don't put figures. We Just toys, not actual figures. It's just there Snoke, I think, so you're probably okay. Okay, so with that, I believe the competitors are as ready as they're going to be. And Christian, before one of them chokes on something, I think we go ahead and get this baby underway. I think so. And I don't even know if we need to show the rules card during all that. All right, so let, uh, let us start with Ethan. Are you ready to get going? Always be closing. And Tom? I took the teddy bear. Then let's get ready to down. Round number one. Question number one. In the realm of action adventure, what 1987 action comedy was the first sequel that Eddie Murphy starred in? 
Christian, you're going to have to use every ounce of that Marky Costello hosting school, okay? I need you to focus here. It's lunacy. It's Christian, I, I can't have you bail on me. Not now. I'm not. Christian Bale, I see what you did there. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. And Ethan. Beverly Hills Cop 2. Yes, Tom. Beverly Hills Cop 2. Yes, sir. One, one, as we get to uh, now question two. All right, next question is in the world of comic book movies. <laughs> I'm losing them, folks. And your question for a point. Who directed Hugh Jackman and Patrick Stewart in 2017's Logan? Jeez. Logan is one of the cooler names you'll ever have for a child these days. If you meet a kid named Logan, he's cool. Potentially. Five. I have thoughts on this, but we'll do it offline. Three, two, one. Pens down, please. And Tom. James Mangold. Yes, sir. And Ethan. James Mangold. Yes. Just a reminder to the competitors, after you're done writing, please put your hands up. Uh, all right. Next question. Question number three. Dramas. What Oscar-winning epic features such characters as Scarlett O'Hara and Rhett Butler? I can't believe he listened to you, Christian. You might have to be the one that locates Tom wherever the hell he is. Guys, he's he's right there. I don't think he can hear us. I... And five, four, three, two, one. Ethan. Gone with the wind. Yes, Tom. Gone with the wind. Three, three. It is a tie game thus far as we get to question number four. That's right, and that takes place in the category of the 1980s. Ethan was but a schoolboy, and Tom was still on his home planet. For a point, your question. Which Oscar-winning actor had an early starring role in the 1986 comedy, The Money Pit? And to quote a great Bostonian, I like The Money Pit. That is my answer to that question. I think I know who that is. And five, four... Three, two, one. Pens down, please. And Tom. Tom Hanks. Yes, and Ethan. T. Hanks. Yep, was it Bill Burr? Uh, no, that was Peter Griffin from the show uh, Family. I don't watch that show as much as I should. All right, here's the next question. Fantasy sci-fi. Marty and Doc travel to what year in the future featuring flying cars and no lawyers and back to the future too. Ooh, so much excitement around this movie. Saw this at the AMC, Newport News, Patrick Henry Mall. And five. I got not Still there. Three, two, okay. one. Pens down, please. And Ethan. 2015. Yes. And Tom. 2015. Yep, tie game, 5-5. Five, five. And here is the uh, next question mark, number six. Still waiting on those hoverboards. Your next question is in the category of comedies. Hey! hey. Right, ah. I'll take it. Your question for a point. Who plays Watson to Will Ferrell's Sherlock Holmes in 2018's Holmes and Watson? And I believe that was Christian's favorite movie of that year. Can I just say I was so mad because we went out to Ray Fiennes to be our Moriarty, and then he did right. it in that movie instead. Four. That is annoying. Three. Jared Harris was great, though. One. Jared Harris was great. All right. And we start with... This would be uh, Tom. John C. Riley. Yes. Ethan. John C. Riley. Yep. And Ethan gets an extra point for name dropping. And now we get to our next question. Horror slash thriller. Ha! Who, who directed the 1993 film Army of Darkness? Uh, technically, Christian, he dropped two names because he not only said that he knows Ralph Fiennes, but he also knows Jared Harris. So. That's true. And he knows a guy named Logan. Four, three, two, one pens down, please, and Ethan. Sam Raimi. Yes, and Tom. Sam Raimi. Yep. 
Uh, once again, reminder to you guys, as soon as you're done writing, please keep the hands up. All right, so last question here. Unless they both get it right, then we're getting a, a perfect round from both of them. That's correct. Shocking as it may be. We told you, folks, different personalities. They know how to answer movie trivia questions. And your last one in round number one comes in the world of animated movies. Could be drawn by computer, stop motion, by hand. And here's the query. Danny DeVito voices a grumpy yet charming creature who tries to protect his forest from being destroyed in what 2012 Dr. Seuss adaptation? Christian, I've done this to you before live. I'm going to do it again. I'll give you a dollar if you can tell me Dr. Seuss's real name. Herb. It's Theodore Geisel. Five, four, three, two, one. Hands down, please. And we start with Tom for the perfect round. The Lorax. Perfect for Tom and for Ethan. The Lorax. Both getting a perfect question here as we get to this ninth question. And because you both got it right, you have to do the same thing you have been doing for the previous eight. Write it down, reveal it, and say it. And it is time. Here it is. Here's the bonus question. What filmmaker received Oscar nominations for writing and producing 2019's Marriage Story? Ooh, you, you catch that Marriage Story, Christian? Uh, I did. Okay. I was going to say don't watch it, but okay. <laughs> I don't recommend it to anybody in a relationship. And five, four, three, two, one. One went down. Ethan. Noah Baumbach. Yes. And Tom? Noah Baumbach. Got it. Nine, nine. As we now get to round number two, as we see ourselves all tied up. Nine, nine. All right, round number two. Mark, how's it go? All right, round number two is the wheel round. The wheel of fate, doom, and ultimately justice will be served to these two individual carbon-based life forms. Once you spin the wheel, you settle on a category. You and you alone are going to hear four questions in said genre. Each question is worth two points. No penalty for missing a question. However, stealing is available in round number two. So if you're not sure of the answer, ask us multiple choice. We'll give you four options, one of which is the correct answer. At that point, the value of the question goes down to one. So Christian, uh, all JTE rules, all challenges intact. Competitors tied at nine, two perfect rounds. Ethan Irwin is going to have the luxury of spinning first or deferring to his opponent. And we're going to hear from Ethan and his manager, Andrew Guy, right now for 60 seconds to make that decision. First of all, hell of a round, buddy. Hell of a Thank round. Thank you. I know you didn't even break a sweat. Those were great questions for you. They're right down the lane. We know we already knew what we we're going to do. We were going to spin first because we knew you were going to be in the lead. And even if we were going to be tied, we knew that you were going to make the decision. So let's just go out there and keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, man. Let's do it. I'll spin. Oh. All right. Let's do it. All right. Here comes the wheel. And here it is. First spin by Ethan Irwin. See, Nora Ephron working on there. That's been a factor in the past. And we see ourselves with Cape Blanchette. Keep playing shit. 60 seconds to decide. Andrew, starting now. How you feeling? It's, it's interesting. I, I, usually I, I go, if there's something I feel I will know at least 50% of the answers correct, I stick with it. There's nothing on here that really scares me. Mm -hmm. But I also, you know, tempting fate is tempting fate. So I think, I mean, I would like to actually hear your, I, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. Because this mean, is one of those where I definitely will get 50% of them. Can I get 100? I mean, Probably. If you're feeling that confident in Cape Blanchett, I'd say go with it. I feel like there's a lot of other really strong categories on the wheel for you, but I also feel like you said tempting fate isn't a good idea. I think 50 plus percent, and I think you'd probably do better. It, it, it's you, you know, it's big time. So if you feel confident in what you're doing with Cape Blanchett, I say go for it, man. Yeah, let's stick with it. Let's do it. I'm, let's see how it goes. All right. So yeah. are, you, are you sure? I, I, yeah, I am. I'd rather that than get like opponent's right. choice and be mad at myself. All right, good. That's right. That's right. That's the right mentality. All right, so thank you, Andrew. Going to drop you out here, too. I'm going to bring back uh, Tom. All right, so Ethan, you're going to get four questions in the realm of Kate Planchette movies. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Here you go. Fellas, let's make sure we can see your hands there. Thank you. T Tom, do not put them in your mouth. Just uh, That's perfect. Just like that is perfect. Thank you. All right, here it is. Here's the first one. Kate Planchette stars alongside Julia Roberts and Tom, 
Sorry. Julia Roberts, Anne Hathaway, and Helena Bonham Carter in what heist film? Ocean's 8. That is correct. All right, here is the second one. Kate Blanchett plays what famous Hollywood starlet in Martin Scorsese's The Aviator? Catherine Hepburn. Correct for two more points. In Blue Jasmine, Kate Blanchett plays a formerly wealthy woman who is forced to go live with her sister in what western U.S. city? San Francisco. Correct for two points. And your final question. Here it is. Kate Blanchett made an uncredited cameo as Janine in what Edgar Wright film? Hot Fuzz. For two more points, Ethan Irwin crushes the board, does phenomenal as we Ooh. move him into the waiting room. We bring back Kate. Kate, you get 60 seconds to talk to Tom before hey. he ends starting now. Hey, Tom, I don't know if I told you. Hey, buddy, look at screen. I If you win this match, Forget the prestige. I got I got my kids' teeth that you can have. You can have. Okay, Tom. Tom. Tom, you got to win the match. Okay, you are doing awesome. Perfect first round. Teeth. You just got a perfect. Oh, yes. Teeth, buddy. They can be yours. All right. Let's and all of the stem cells in there. Now, we're gonna, you're going to do great, buddy. Okay, you keep going. You just keep going with this perfect game. And those teeth are yours, pal. I can have all the teeth. All of them. Unfortunately, we have 20 seconds left if you want well, to. Well, that's we're, we're ready to spin. So right. I'll tell you what. Ready right. to spin, Tommy boy? Here we go. Okay. All right, here's the spin. Okay. Always be closing. Always be closing. That's what we say. We say that all the time. That's the thing we say. So always be closing. Always be closing. Tom, Tom 60 seconds. 60 seconds starting now Tom of everything that's left on the wheel where does this fall is this do you feel comfortable with this do you feel like ah, there's worse out there you feel like there's better out there what do you think oh so Tom it was I was it was I was talking to you pal Tom spin again okay spin good again. choice good choice Here's the spin by Tom. Whatever you take here, you gotta take it, and you'll get four questions. That's in the worst case scenario. You land an opponent's choice, and he gives you ram cows. You know what I mean? Uh, always be closing. Always be closing. Seventies, seventies oh. movies. All right. So, Kate, okay, we're gonna remove you here. You got seventies okay. movies, and we're gonna bring back Ethan. Tom, you're gonna get four questions in the realm of the nineteen seventies. Not to be cute, you know. Not the 1470s. All right, here we go. Um, okay, Tom, 1970. Tom, if I may ask, were you alive during the 1970s? Do you remember anything about that decade? Yes. I'll Something. take it. I'll, I'm going to quit while I'm ahead. Tom, your first question in the world of the 1970s movies is, for two points, which famous comedic actor played Dr. Ross in Woody Allen's cult hit Everything you always wanted to know about sex. Multiple choice. All right. For one point, is it A, Walter Matthau, B, Peter Sellers, C, Jerry Lewis, or D, Gene Wilder? Peter Sellers. That is incorrect. So for a one point steal, Ethan, I'm going to repeat the question and the multiple choice options for a point. Which famous comedic actor played Dr. Ross in Woody Allen's cult hit, Everything You Always Wanted to Know About Sex? Is it A, Walter Matthau, B, Peter Sellers, C, Jerry Lewis, or D, Gene Wilder? Five. I'll say D, Gene Wilder. Kate Blanchett wasn't in it, but he still got the point, Christian. That's a big steal for Ethan. All right, big steal for Ethan Irwin as we find ourselves now 18-9 to 9, as we get to the next question here in the 1970s. All right, Tam, 
your question for two points in the 1970s. Who directed the 1971 film Dirty Harry? Multiple choice. All right, for a point. Is it A, Clint Eastwood, B, Don Siegel, C, Ted Post, or D, James Fargo? B, as in bear. B, as in bear, Don Siegel is correct for a point. Tom picks up a big point there. He needed it as we get to the next question here. Right back to an eight point game now, bouncing out the steal. Two questions remain for Tom in the 1970s. Your penultimate question. In Monty Python and the Holy Grail, what does the French taunter say your mother smells like? Elderberries. That is correct for two points and a great question and answer there. As Tom cuts the lead to six, Christian, so there's no more knockout worries, but Tom can really claw his way back into this match if he gets this last question right and get that much closer to Kate's kid's teeth. Here's your question. Jack Nicholson played a therapist in what 1975 musical based on music by The Who? Tommy. That's kind of like your name, and it's two points, Christian. So all of a sudden, we got us a four-point game going into round three. He cuts it within four. Ethan had a great round, stole one point there, and he sees himself with a four-point lead going into round number three. Mark, what are the rules for round number three? Round number three is the round that will determine the match, unless we go to sudden death overtime, which we are prepared for. So in round three, we need a series of numbers from each competitor. These numbers may range from one to 20. We need three numbers from each of you. You can't use the same numbers as your opponent. Why? Because each number corresponds to a unique category of movie trivia schmodown secrecy. Your first question is going to be worth two points. Next one is three points. Your final one, should we make it that far, is worth five of the biggest points of the tournament that could see you advance to the final four. Keep in mind, there's no penalty for missing a question, and there is no stealing in round three. Christian, each competitor still has their full complement of JTE rules and challenges. This is true. All right, so we start with uh, Ethan, who's in the lead. Ethan, three uh, three numbers, please. Uh, 17, 1, and 7. 17, 1, and 7. And for Tom? Tom, you can't Ten. take... Yeah, okay. You got it. What? Zero. No, you can't take zero. Oh. Ten. 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 Okay, that's good. You can take ten. Eight. You can take eight. Eleven. Eleven. All right, thank you, Tom. Uh, all right, so we're going to start with Andrew. you got 60 seconds to talk to Ethan here starting now. How are you feeling? I feel good. I mean, look, I like having this lead. Um, I like having a little bit of a cushion there. Uh, but, you know, doesn't mean anything if he gets all of his, so it means i got to get mine, and that's fine too. Uh, but no, I, I like it. This is how I thought it was going to go, and uh, let's just hope, uh, you know, the trivia gods are in my favor with those numbers I picked. Yeah, look, I mean, Cape Blanchett worked out just the way you thought it was going to. The wheel was great just the way you thought it was going to be. So let's just keep doing what we're doing. Let's do it. All right. Uh, Kate, 60 seconds to talk to Tom. Sorry, now. Hey, Tom. All I got to do is just say this, okay? Got those titties for you. Okay, buddy? Where are you getting these? Okay, from my kid's mouth. That happens, Andrew <laughs> guy. Okay, How many now, Tom. Tom. <laughs> I'm not going to disclose that, buddy. You know we have certain rules, okay? You, I'll tell you what, I want to say something to you. You are not out of this game. It is still your game to win, my friend, okay? You can, those teeth can still be yours. You are not out, my friend. Keep it going. Keep it going, buddy. You got, you, you got this. All right. Thank, thank you, Kate. Thank you, Andrew. All right, going to remove them both. As we will start with Tom who is going to try to avoid the TKO here. Tom, you chose category 10 for your first category. That is in the realm of the 1980s. Here it is. Here's your first question from the 80s. All right. Who directed The Goonies? Richard Donner. For two points. There it is. 1816. All right. So now to take the lead here over Ethan. You need to hit the three-pointer. And that is 
Category 8. That is in the realm of musicals. Musicals. All right. So, Tom, for your three-pointer, here it is. What new wave rock star played Amber's mother, Velma Von Tussel, in 1988's Hairspray? Five, four. Can you repeat the question? Yep, first one. What new wave rock star played Amber's mother, Velma Von Hussel, in 1988's Hairspray? Five, four, three, two. Share. Looking for Debbie Harry. Debbie Harry is what we're looking for here. That's a toughie for a three. Well, here is the final question. The final question. This would be if you hit it, you will bounce it back. This is five points. It'll bounce back. And you will have forced Ethan to answer some questions. However, if Tom misses, Ethan Irwin will win via TKO. And he will pick up four big points for the usual suspects. All right, Tom. Here it is. We chose category 11, and that would be dance films. Dance films. All right. Here is the question. Who made their directorial debut with the film Strictly Ballroom? Baz Luhrmann. For five points, Tom hits it and now ethan irwin will have to answer some questions as tom avoids the tko and now ethan irwin will have to answer some questions here mark that is correct christian ethan's gonna have to answer at least two questions correct here if he wants to go with the two and the three pointer he can win outright if he just gets the five but you probably don't want to come to that because that's probably a harder question so ethan for two points you selected number 17 and Doug Williams' number corresponds to the category of directors. Okay. Get this question right. You're one query away from advancing to the final four. And here it is for two points. Office Space and Idiocracy were both directed by which comedic individual? Mike Judge. <laughs> that is correct for two points. And now Ethan Irwin finds himself trailing Tom by merely a point and can win with this next question answer. Ethan, for your three-pointer, you selected number one. And Warren Moon's number corresponds to crime movies. All right. Crime films and your question for the win. To deny Tom teeth. What Tarantino regular plays Sonny Black, a gangster who was promoted to captain in Donnie Brasco? Five, four, three. Repeat. First one. Right. First of three JCE rules. Your question in crime movies. What Tarantino regular plays Sonny Black, a gangster who is promoted to captain in Donnie Brasco? Hmm. Is it Michael Madsen? And you're Advancing to the next round, Ethan Big Time Irwin. Ethan Irwin does it. He wins. Whew. Pulling Michael Matson. Ethan, let's start with that Michael Matson question. Did how did you how did you come to it? Have you seen that movie? Did you know I it? I did, but years ago, and I was like, I was thinking Pacino, but I'm like, he's not a regular. And then I'm like. But who and I'm trying to remember back through that movie. Um, wow. Anyway, I was, I'm glad I didn't have to do the five. Well, uh, Ethan, uh, excuse me, Andrew. Yeah. You 
This is a match here that you see that your partner for the team's tournament played a heck of a game. I don't believe he missed a single question, if he did I'm not. if I'm correct. And so, uh, look, when you watch him play here, and I have to say, I don't know what the heck has happened with you over the last couple of weeks, but you have might have a career in managing. For what you did here, you were cool, you were calm, as Gucci would say, you were collective. I'll say collected. And you were, uh, what was it kind of going into this that you were, is it because Ethan is, is you know that he's got it? How was it kind of managing here today for you? Andrew. Uh, yeah. Um, well, you know, for me, it was great. It was great. I um, I just came out here and did what I had to do. And uh, Ethan played a perfect game. You know, that second round, you know, that was the only piece of strategy that him and I really had to discuss. It was clear that, you know, our opponent, was very strong. He was a very strong player. He watched a lot of his game tape, um, but stuff that got a little bit older, he struggled with. So taking Kate Blanchett left other things on the wheel that Ethan might still be strong. And if Ethan spun 70s, I think he would have done just fine. So it was almost like leaving both of his strengths on the wheel, maybe, who knows, but also maybe using one of your slices to our advantage. Yeah, it, Christian, uh, Ethan certainly has a formidable challenge coming up in the next round. But before we get to that, Ethan, what was it like? What was the experience like playing against a something like Tom? Well, look, I don't know from what supernatural realm he's able to pull these answers, but uh, I'm always impressed by him. When, again, when we played against each other in teams, you know, he beat me. So today I get to spell redemption T-O-M. Fair enough. Now, Ethan, moving on over here to the next round. You started your season this year with a victory. Out of all these matches I've seen you play so far, your toughest match or the one that you looked the most vulnerable was your first match, and that was against Jeff Snyder. You find yourself again going up against Jeff Snyder here in the semifinals, and he is looking for some redemption. He's already hoping and been saying that he wants you to win this match because he wants to beat you because he believes that he's a better player and that he beat you last time. Do you have words for Jeff Snyder? I mean, I'm glad he's in much better health. He looks great. I would say that um, I would say that. Look, I know he, that is his mindset that he outplayed me. But literally, we both the match was very similar to what Tom and I just did. Uh, literally, we, ha we have both had the same perfect first round. Second round, he had a one point steal from me, and then you know I still came back over the top and beat him. So fair enough. Uh, and Andrew, going into now with teams. Does this match, as far as you kind of getting your, uh, I would say, wits together, if I can, uh, it, does this get your confidence up, A, watching Ethan play like this, B, getting your head back into the uh, mechanics of the game? You know, just because you look better doesn't mean you feel better. <laughs> uh, but just to let you know, uh, congratulations to you, Ethan. Cheers to you, man. I'm glad that you're enjoying that beverage. You earned it. Uh, head back in the game. My head is, it's, it's fine. It's been fine. It's been in the game. I had a rough match. Everyone has rough matches. I think in the last few months, we've seen some incredible matches from a lot of people that we didn't expect and a lot of bad matches from people that we did expect. And I think that it's, I've been fine. I'm just doing fine. Okay. All right. So Andrew Guy, uh, Ethan Irwin, congratulations, Ethan. Andrew, Thank you. And we'll see both of you guys in the team's tournament and, uh, and good to see you both. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm trusting whatever's happening with that. And it, maybe we saw some cracks there at the end. I'm, I'm going to wish for the best. And I'm going to hope that a good night's sleep after a stressful match maybe uh, helps everybody. Well, all right. Now, bringing back both Tom and Kate here. So, Tom, well, Tom, you can just say whatever you like. Kate, uh, Tom played great. As you said, he great. played great. He had that five pointer, the Baz Luhrmann pull that got him into the uh, the next uh, the next you know had it forced Ethan to win the game. Basically, he didn't take the TKO there. So, are you proud of the way that Tom played in this tournament? Oh my God, yeah. Listen, I, I always say about my my uh, my my den mates, my little cubs, my little lion cubs in the den. I, it's not it's not you know the end result sure we can we can get some points here or there i'm proud of the way he played you know this guy you find a hole in this guy's knowledge you just can't so for me i love the way i love the game he played i love that he took it all the way to the you know to his own five pointer i love that it wasn't a tko you know ethan Irwin obviously is really good but you know i feel like tom hung and that's always for me i'm like did you hang you know you know did you hang or did you pull an Andrew guy versus Ben Bateman? You know what I mean? Like it's, it's one of those things, you know? So he, he, he hung. 
Uh, Christian, I'm just going right in for this. Tom, you spun away from romantic comedies and landed on 1970s. Um, what was it about rom-coms that turned you off? Do you not enjoy movies where two people put aside their differences and come together in a comedic fashion? They're movies about people kissing. That's and right, Tom. That's yeah, right. Tom doesn't like that. Is that is that fair to say? Not his thing. Okay. Okay. Next look, question. Kate, Kate, so this I'm gonna ask you the same question I ask uh Andrew. You ha- now have Tom and Paul who are now are gonna be in the teams tournament. Yeah, yeah. Now because of Tom and how he's played in the team in this singles tournament, they went two and one, which is yeah. in this gauntlet is very impressive. Yeah. Um does that bring the confidence back to say Paul Preston, who has not had a great year thus far? Okay, let's go easy on that. Uh, <laughs> listen, comic book movies was a really hard category in his match. Oh God, Tom, Tom, Tommy, Tom. Uh, but listen, this is what I have to say. I'm just excited that we had this happen with Ethan today, so that when we see Ethan again in the in the tournament, hopefully in the in the in the teams tournament, that Tom can beat him as a team again i'm i'm excited for that because then we can spell redemption always be closing fair enough all right so tom it's great it's always great to see you um and i would uh, i would advise you to get out of that house as soon as possible before the authorities come all right all right so there you go there's tom and paul tom played great he's he's finds himself two and one overall two and one in this tournament but ethan Irwin is once again the story as Ethan Irwin finds himself now 13 and five, 13 and five, 13 and five with five knockouts, as he is only second to the champion, Dangerous Dan Merle, who sees himself at 16 and five. So Ethan Irwin's just climbing up there once again. He did it, he's done it so fast. You don't, people don't forget, this is only Ethan's third season. Season, it is Ethan's third season in the league, and he's already uh, got that many victories. It's out of control what he's done so far, but he does find himself up against Jeff Snyder now. Look at these, look at these brackets right here. This is the semifinals, as you see on that side of the bracket, the semifinals, and then on this side, got Ethan Irwin and Jeff Snyder. A rematch from the beginning of the year. Mark, this is Snyder's locked in just the same way that that. Ethan is all these players that are left in the semifinals are the ones who have been in locked in the most, in my opinion. It's a more focused Jeff Snyder for sure, Christian. And he's still got his flamboyant devil may care attitude. But you can tell he's putting preparation time in. And for Ethan Irwin, look, if you grow up reading the Bible, he's Goliath. If you're like my family and you grow up worshiping Mortal Kombat, he's Goro. And all four arms are clicking right now, as well as two. I can't remember how many Goro had, but Ethan's really good at movie trivia. And you got to be to beat uh, something like Tom, because you may watch this match and say, well, the Schmodown has entirely too many competitors that break into other folks' houses just to steal their internet to play a match. But I say that we have a lot of people who know a lot about movie trivia and the managers, particularly the job that Kate and Grace did today, wrangling Tom. I think hats off to them. Hats off to Andrew Guy. I don't know what he's doing as of this moment, five minutes after the match, but I know during the match, he was focused. He was helping Ethan Irwin. And maybe you and I learned something about not underestimating people so much. I don't know, man. From what he did today, he he looked really good on that manager's side. And it seemed like he was put together for the most part. I don't know the end what happened. But either way, this was a big victory for the usual suspects who once again pick up some more points because of Ethan Irwin. Um, now, they have more chance to do that, not only with the semifinals and potentially if Ethan can win this whole thing, but now they have Ethan and Andrew in the teams tournament. So that's a potential for the suspects to start climbing back. The Den is going to need some big victories here from Tom and Paul leading into this next match. As there's no, there's just no doubt about it into the next uh, teams tournament, that is. But Mark, one of the fun, most fun things that are happening, the Bachelor Schmodown Championship. Ashley Iaconetti, you know her from Bachelor Pad, The Bachelor, and she goes up against Nick Val. That's right, the former Bachelor himself in a Bachelor trivia Schmodown. Jared Haben on the desk with Mark Ellis. It is going to be a spectacular spectacular event if you are a bachelor fan if you are not go and check that out that's on twitch 
Yeah, I, I don't know that I'd recommend Tom watching that match because The Bachelor features a lot of people that might kiss at some point. So maybe Tom's mam stays him away from that. But for everybody else out there, check out the Twitch match. It's going to be a lot of fun. Very excited to reunite with my old pal Jared Haben to call the match. And Christian, it's just another cog in the Schmodown machine that through a worldwide pandemic and everything else going on in 2020 keeps on what? What? It, Answer is Chuglin. Oh. Worked okay. together for over a decade, folks. All right. All right, everybody. So thank you for joining us here today. Ladies and gentlemen, we will see you tomorrow. And then next week, it all goes down. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for Mark Ellis. Thanks for our great team over here. I'm Christian Harloff. We'll see you next time.